Most of us are only living at 40% of our capability. The mind has a restrictor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a restrictor on it, the car may say 130 miles per hour, but the restrictor is set for 91. The car wants to go. The car wants to go, but the factory restrictor says, no, we're not going past 91. We have a restrictor in our brain. It's a survival mechanism, and it protects us from pain and suffering. And your brain pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. When you get to 40%, your brain says, we're done studying. This is starting to get uncomfortable. So you stop studying. So if you start to feel the pain at 40%, that's where it starts. Okay, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this nonsense to me. It's trying to get you to procrastinate. It's trying to get you to relax and take a step back. But this is the time you have to regain control back of your mind. It's like, okay, let me see if I can go 45 or 50%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope and start pushing back, your mind is going, wait, what are you doing? I'm telling you to go right, but you're going left. You then start controlling your mind. You start finding more in yourself. And then you go from 40% to 50% to 60% to 70 to 80 or even 90. But that's the start of it. Get to the spot where your mind is saying, stop. Wherever that is, get there first. And then that's where you can start pushing back. You've got to control yourself in that moment. We all know people that have these dreams and ambitions and they talk and talk and talk about what they're gonna do. And they're talking and talking, but there's no action. They say they're going to do this and they're going to do that. But when are they going to do it? They just end up coasting through life like everyone else. So you can see that behavior in another person. So don't be that person. Do something about it. Do something to move you towards that goal. If that means studying an extra hour that day, then so be it. If that means going for a 30 minute run after class, then so be it. It doesn't matter what it is. However small or insignificant that step seems. If you take one small step, 365 days a year, it all adds up. Once you truly realize where you stand amongst the 7 billion people in the world when it comes to opportunity, it's ridiculous. And let me tell you what happens when you take responsibility for your life and you see the opportunities in front of you for what they are. You start to take control you realize that there's nothing else, no one else that's controlling your life. It's all on you. In the words of Gary Vaynerchuk, your ego and your insecurity doesn't want to take the hit. You don't want to admit that you messed up because for some reason, so many of you are living your lives based on other people's opinions and that is crippling you. The way you really eliminate fear is to not care about anyone else's opinion. My losses are mine. I'll deal with them myself. I don't need your two cents. You're losing plenty on your own. If you let somebody else's opinion, whether it's your friend, your partner, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, if you are genuinely living the exact life you want to live, then what will happen is you'll stop waiting for the right time to make a move. You'll stop waiting to make a change or break bad habits you'll stop blaming others for the lack of happiness in your life. But if your life has been out of control for so long, regaining control will not happen overnight. If you're committed to experiencing your own happiness and creating positive things in your life for yourself, you will. People are waiting for the right time to make a move, take a chance, make a change or break a bad habit. 
yet that right time never seems to appear. Each of us have plenty of excuses as to why we're stuck in the metaphorical mud of life, feeling like we control little more than the air we breathe into our lungs. And the truth is, it's easy to blame others for our lack of happiness. When it comes to studying, consistency is so, so important. A lot of people win and then they chill for two or three months, but real winners, they have their finger on the pulse all the time. They're always looking for the next one. They're not studying to get satisfied. They're studying to learn everything there is to know. They never get to a place where they feel like they made it because as long as you're moving towards achieving something, you keep studying. You keep reading, you keep learning, you stay hungry. And watch how it changes you, day by day, month by month, you'll evolve into a completely different person. If we did even just a fraction of all the things that we know that we should be doing, we'd all be A-grade students right now. But there's so many things that we talk to ourselves and say, yeah, I know I should be doing this. Yeah, I should be doing that. I should be studying more. I should be eating healthier. We all know what we need to do to become the best version of ourselves. But for whatever reason, we're not doing it. And so the ability to choose and actually decide to do what we know we should be doing, it's a superpower. That's what defines the greatest performers to the people that haven't quite made it yet. It's the difference between an A-grade student and a C-grade student. The C-grade student knows when he should be studying, but he doesn't study straight away. He procrastinates for an hour or two before he actually starts, whereas the A-grade student goes to work immediately, as soon as it's time, not a minute after. When it's time to study, stand up to it, face it. What does that time mean to you? Is it something that is negotiable, or is it set in concrete? What is it that you're waiting for? How much do you want it? Ask yourself this, what's more important, procrastination or your education? If you don't know what to do, if you don't know where to start, it's very simple. Just aim to be a little bit better today than you were yesterday. And when you start to do this, you'll start to see some incredible results you'll start to become someone that you never thought you could be. But your progression is not going to be in a linear path. You'll go through cycles of stress and recovery. So it's just being able to surf the flow of that. So you can start small. If you normally watch two hours of Netflix at nighttime, decrease it to one hour and study an extra hour that night. If you do that every day, that's seven hours extra studying a week. You have to really study hard. You have to back your studying with hard work. You ask anyone successful, what's the secret to success? A lot of people will say hard work. They have no doubt in their mind that they're working harder than everyone else. So, do you have it in your mind that you're working harder than everyone else in your class or everyone else in your year? This is where your journey starts. This is where you grow. This is where you adapt. Grow to become the person that you admire. This is you. This can be you. Stop failing to respond, to react. It's at crossroads like this where you decide where your future goes. All this work you're doing now are the steps before you break the ribbon at the finish line. This is your opportunity to change. Change towards a better life, towards a life where you are the director, where you take control, where you control the direction of your life. This is the time to become something more than ordinary. Because you're more than average. 
You always have been. But in order for you to become this, you need to work. <laughs>